Hi there, welcome to Victim to Victor, the podcast dedicated to empowering abuse survivors and inspiring healing, hope and positive change. I'm Anu Verma, a published author, and in every episode, I'll sit down with a guest and embark on an insightful conversation about trauma, as well as practical strategies to start the healing process. So let's get started. I hope you enjoy the show. And here is Dr. Sangeeta calling all the way from Delhi. How are you? Namaskar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anu. Actually, my, my home is in London, but right now oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I had to, well, I didn't have to, but I, I, I kind of took, brought my mother back to Delhi. So um, okay. in November, just so, so I'm, I'm here for a couple yeah. of months in the winter. <gasps> oh, I don't blame you. It's been snowing this <laughs> week. So. You've escaped it. You've escaped the cold. I know. <laughs> oh, I what's, know. The, what's the temperature there now? It's actually pretty chilly. We've had rain. It's been it's been like autumn weather in in London oh. in the last few days over here. So okay. we've actually all got like our fleeces on here. <laughs> See that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> So thank you so much for coming on and um, just obviously sh shedding your your light and sharing your wisdom with my listeners because I was really excited to have you on. And uh, for my listeners, um, this is going to be like a three or four part series. Um, so today is our first part. And this is purely because Dr. Sangeeta being such an experienced um, advocate of trauma and also you know a doctor in in a speciality field of integrative uh, medicine and also the founder of unified human found foundation in the uk as well she's got so much to offer us so thank you so much for coming on <laughs> thank you anu and your listeners for for having me and you know, just just sharing your time and your attention. It's mm. it's really a, a joy and, and a delight to share what I can with with you and with your audience. Thank you so much. Wow. So for my audience's um, information, please, could you just describe a bit more about who you are and why you're here today? <laughs> Okay, so it's like you said, my background is in integrative medicine mm -hmm. and I come from four generations of medical doctors. So I had a little bit of a twist in my sort of medical journey because I was very interested from an early age in the origin of disease okay. rather than just in the symptomatic therapeutic relief of disease. Mm. So <clears throat> when I when I finished med school and I, I trained in normal Western medicine, yeah. um, but I was really interested in, you know, healing. I was interested in energetics and um, I was very much interested in the whole spiritual side because yeah. I'd had a lot of personal spiritual experiences okay. from a young age. Mm. Um, which nowadays are, I think, far more um, talked about and discussed and more openly, and they're sort of called multidimensional experiences. Yeah. Um, but in, in the, at that time, it, it wasn't so long ago, but at that time, it wasn't really something. I, and I didn't think that these experiences were terribly unusual because they were just normal for me. But when I went in, when I was actually my final year in clinics, I had patients that were coming specifically to me and they would keep coming back to see me, um, despite the fact that we had like consultants, junior consultants in, in the clinics and, and you know, I wasn't even really allowed to prescribe anything at the time, but there was something happening and they would tell me, they were like, you know, we, we, we come, we talk to you, and not only do we feel better, but we can see changes happening in our, in our bodies and, you know, in our health. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. this is very interesting. But to be honest, I knew I just pushed it to the back of my mind 
because I had no idea what to do with it at the yeah. time. Yeah. So it was after after I finished medicine and I did my internship and I did like a year and a half of obstetrics and gynecology studying. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, okay, I want to explore this. And I went into spirituality, I learned, um, and I actually worked with some wonderful spiritual kind of teachers, facilitators. They're no longer on, on the planet, they're past. Okay. But they were really very, very genuine, very authentic. And I feel very privileged and honored to have, to have met them and worked with them. Yeah. And through that experience, I also realized that I really wanted to be able to at least talk about these things in a reasonable, logical way, um, rather than a sort of esoteric metaphysical way yeah so I chose then to go and work with quantum physicists because because quantum physics at the time at the time was the only thing which was talking about non-linear and sort of out of the box scientific mm. um scientific theories and concepts yeah mm -hmm. um and that seemed at the time, the most, um, the most in, in, in alignment with spiritual, spirituality. Mm -hmm. So I worked with quantum physicists in the States and I worked with biophysicists in the UK. And we were at the time, this will really interest your listeners, I think. Mm -hmm. We were at the time actually doing scientific experiments. So it wasn't just theoretical, yeah. but um, these, these professors, they actually had machines. Mm -hmm. And biophysicists had machines that we could, we an equipment through which we could look at the human body and actually see the chakra system. Wow. And we could okay. see like the meridians, which is in traditional Chinese yeah. medicine, and you've got the meridian system. Yeah. And we could see the frequencies moving through these systems, these subtle energy systems, wow. mm -hmm. and we could see the changes. So we were doing quite a few experiments at the time yeah. where we could, where, you know, if people were doing some specific breathing techniques or breath work, yeah. how the frequencies would change in their bodies. Wow. And we could, we verified that um, technically. And then we could also see like, we did experiments with, you know, um, yoga poses. We did experiments with mantras we did experiments with um, thought patterns and changing thoughts. And we did experiments with um, even prayer, especially prayer actually. Yeah. And we were able to validate the changes that happen when you actually use these different tools and techniques yeah. um, for, for healing and um, therapeutically. And, and we also did lovely experiments, I remember, with animals. So, you know, when you give, give yeah. energy healing or Reiki yeah. to, to dogs or cats, and we could see the difference in, in their frequencies. And oh, that was very beautiful. Oh. That was a very beautiful time. Oh, that um, is, yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and then I went on um, to to study epigenetics, which is mm -hmm. the effect of you know the environment on the gene genetic expression, and the effect of also uh, community and um, culture on the genetic expression, and also I studied nutrigenomics, which is the effect of nutrition and um, foods and food types and food groups on genetic expression. And also something called psychoneuroendocrinoimmunology, which is really interesting too, because um, it's the influence of thoughts and how thoughts affect an individual's endocrine system, nervous yeah. system and immune system through a very clear physiological and biochemical pathway in the body. So mm. here's the proof scientifically of how thoughts and what you think actually affects your physical body. Okay. So wow. 
And with that work then, I just added on my own, um, my own research and work on consciousness. Mm -hmm. So it's really consciousness affects thoughts, yeah. which then affects our physical and emotional bodies and um, environments. So okay. mm -hmm. this is kind of like the backbone of the work that I've done and I am continuing to do the model <clears throat> that I use. Um, and obviously partly it's verified scientifically and partly it's definitely verified through direct human experience with patients, with clients. And then I also have an MBA, um, a business degree. Oh, yeah. And Lovely. that sort of led me into the field of the planet and mm -hmm. sustainability and climate change and cultural sustainability, community sustainability. And that's how the foundation was, was created because I did a lot of work, hands-on work, with communities, um, some indigenous, a lot of rural communities in, in India, in Africa, yeah. in North America. So that was, and that was my real passion because, yeah. you know, it came from the whole epigenetics and the world of culture and how powerful culture and cultural stories our, in our kind of our health yeah. And our and our individual expression of who we are, so that was always fascinating for me. So, in a nutshell, that's sort of a little bit about me. Wow, I love that, and I love how you mentioned about the thoughts and how that can really impact our physical form. Because, um, again, you know, I've kind of learned about the thoughts and where they come from from the likes of Deepak Chopra. Um, so, where do thoughts come from? from your perception? <laughs> that is beautiful question. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I read this and I've heard it repeated many times. I will tell you honestly, I have no idea okay. how it's been calculated, yeah. but it is said that 75% of the thoughts mm. that each one of us thinks or is going through our system yeah. does not come from us. No, Only 25% no. of the thoughts that we have come from us. Wow, crazy. That so yeah. I said, okay, if let's just say 75% or whatever number mm. come from the outside. Yeah. What is it that we would be exposed to that would, mean, that would mean that 75% of what we're thinking is, is not from us. So logically, it's our environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's our family culture. Right. Okay. It's our um, kind of uh, our inner circle of uh, family, friends, relatives. Okay. Wow. It's... TV and social media. Yeah. yeah. And then it's how I think more than anything else, it's really how we've been brought up. Because in almost every wisdom teaching of every culture and religion, it is said that give me a child until mm. the age of seven, wow. and I will give you the man slash woman, which basically means that. Children imbibe from zero to seven hmm. most of what they're going to express in their lives. Wow. So they've been programmed wow. from zero to seven, hmm. which is exactly why when I work with parents, parents like yourself, Anu, yeah. say, well, our children are like clones. They copy mm. everything we say and do. So we've yeah. got to be really careful. Yeah. And that's so true. It is true, yeah. They're sponges. They absorb mm. everything. And you don't even realize they're absorbing it. I do, yeah. And I guess that leads to my next question regarding, you know, those um, innocent children who actually are abused before the age of seven. The trauma associated with that. Absolutely. Mm. 
So I know you're really into um, kind of gen generational trauma and um, the fact that, you know, do we inherit trauma? Partly, mm. definitely, because um, it's, it's a cultural thing, isn't it? Generationally, like mm -hmm. um, you've, you come from your mother and your father. Your mother has been exposed to certain things in her lineage through her parents and grandparents and et cetera, et cetera. And in the generations, truly speaking, internally, things just keep repeating, repeating, repeating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the way that our systems actually change something mm -hmm. is when we become exposed to something completely different. So in, in kind of generational trauma, what I've seen is when somebody say completely marries into a different culture or a different religion or a different, um, somebody from a completely different country, then you've got exposure. The whole family gets exposed to, to something very different. And that's when you can really bring about change, change in behavior, change in lifestyle, change in food, change in, you know, introduce different belief systems yeah. and intro introduce different ways of, of living. Okay. So yeah. that's very interesting. Wow. And it kind of really uh, justifies what I feel like is my purpose now, because my, um, you know, my little boy's dad he's also had um childhood trauma like we both have literally at the same age of three and uh, i feel like now because i am here changing that pattern by doing what i'm doing hopefully it will instill onto my little boy definitely mm. definitely and i wouldn't be surprised actually because i've seen this is um the, this is a generalization but okay what happens is children, whatever the parents experience, mm. the next generation, they will either become like that or they will be completely the opposite. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if you've got two mm. of you that have mm. both experienced childhood trauma, mm. then the chances are pretty high yeah. that your son won't. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's reassuring, right? <laughs> and I guess as well, it, you know, it, it gives a lot of my listeners hopes, you know, for those who are parents currently and, um, you know, they are worried about their own children, um, maybe experiencing some of the trauma that, that they have. And it's just to give, you know, everyone hope that you can be the change. You know, you can turn this pattern around. And uh, Oh, definitely yeah and that was going to be my next question how can they turn it around fantastic question the foundation of changing anything mm. is having the awareness yeah. of it mm -hmm. and with awareness there's almost like an automatic switch okay. that goes off in the brain especially if you've, you've been working on this and you're already aware that it exists, mm. then you're, you're almost gonna be like hardwired and fine tuned to pick it up with somebody that is in your, that you're in, your, that you're in a guardianship with. Okay. So mm. your child or your loved one, you're gonna pick it up, you're gonna sense it even way before it starts to happen. Okay. Wow. So then the question arises, actually, Anu, is whether you're going to take action on that awareness or not. Wow. Yeah. And a lot of that comes down from trusting yourself, your intuition. Well, that plus also it comes down to actually have you truly broken your own patterns of trauma? OK. Yeah. Because if you've really broken your own patterns, it's going to be really easy for you to take action. If there's still residual 
trauma patterns within the parent, mm. then there may still be hesitation or reluctance in taking action. So I'll give you an example. One of the classic is um, child abuse or um, uh, spouse abuse, yeah. or even alcohol addictions mm -hmm. and abuse through that. So I've seen a lot of really incredible men and women yeah. who, you know, they've really worked, really worked, really worked. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to actually doing something for their child or something they suddenly just become some another person wow and you, okay. and i'm like but you know what it's like you've been through it yourself yeah and they say yes we know but something just we couldn't we just couldn't step up okay yeah so it's, it's very subjective, I mean, honestly, there's no that, you know, there's no standardized generalizations related to this work and this no, field. Absolutely not. No. And I know that, you know, you've done a lot of work on um, the energy fields, which, as we all know, um, you know, the chakras are very important when it comes to energy work. So how real is healing? Oh, healing is very real. Now, the question is actually, how deep has the healing penetrated? Okay. Yeah. Because healing is, 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 is always great. It's, it always works, but how far does it go? Yeah. Because things like, and we're talking about trauma here, but trauma itself, do you mind if we if we rewind a little bit and take sure. a few steps back? Because yeah, that's good. I really wanted to just um, mention what is for you, say, I know, yeah. the definition of trauma. Wow. So trauma is um, like a consequence of um, you know something which you've gone through, which um, caused you harm. Which, okay yeah. so okay no that that's 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 true so for me trauma is such mm -hmm. a general word yeah. like stress you oh, know yeah 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 it's it can it can it encompass can <laughs> exactly right i know many yeah. many things it can. and i have not met one single human being mm -hmm. animal plant that hasn't been exposed to <laughs> some trauma. level of trauma. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <I know. laughs> We're all traumatized to some degree, you know. It's yeah. Exactly. Because I think life. I think, you know, life is traumatic. Yeah. Let's face it. Know. You know, yeah. As soon as we get bills come for it, that's traumatic. But, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pay a bill now. <laughs> it's just, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's very true it's very true so I think like you know the whole system of life is pretty traumatic whether whether you're in in an urban city or whether you're in nature whether you're in a village believe me mm. it's all traumatic yeah. because mm. um change anything to do with change and we're constantly in dynamic change yeah you know we're not yeah. we're not like just inert material we're we're constantly we're conscious wherever there will be consciousness there will be dynamic dynamism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wherever there is dynamism, there's going to be resist forces which resist, forces which encourage, forces mm -hmm. which support. It's always going to be that mix and that play yeah. of, of forces going on all the time. Yeah. So sure. then it comes down to an individual. And mm -hmm. what what could be traumatic, I mean, um, strongly, intensely traumatic for one person, may be water of a duck's back for somebody else. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like, for example, rejection, that could be traumatic for people or failure, you know, um, whereas for others, it's, uh, you know, it's like, yay, you know, what have I learned from this? How can you use this to grow? So absolutely. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Right, absolutely. And then I suppose um, when it comes to healing, 
again, you can't really put a, put a finger at it because healing is different for everybody. It's very different for everybody, but I, I think there are certain things that we, we do see come up again and again. And I've seen these as qualities and that's how I describe them in a person. So somebody who's got sincerity, mm. they'll, I've seen them, they will definitely push through. Somebody who's got perseverance, somebody yeah. who's, okay. got, who's got patience, yeah. and somebody who's got courage. Okay, that's a big one. And, yeah. yeah, and willpower, yeah. because something is traumatic, actually, because we have labeled it as such okay. as well. Yeah. So if something, I mean, things just happen, let's face it. Yeah. So if we, I mean, for some people, what happens is pleasant mm -hmm. and for others, it's unpleasant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, if it's unpleasant, it becomes traumatic or at least stressful, if not traumatic, which is a, a kind of a intense level of stress, yeah. it's stressful. Okay, absolutely. So then it comes down to how much can an individual process stress and what levels of stress? Yeah, okay. And that's where healing then shows its own beautiful effect. Right. because healing is very much connected up with personality okay wow yeah. okay I'll give you an example because I've been working on this actually in the last week or so directly people who are receptive hmm. the healing penetrates deeper it does yeah yeah whereas people who are sincere they're like okay yes i definitely want the healing but yeah. they're not really receptive mm, yeah. and it's not because they're not consciously receptive consciously they're saying yes but unconsciously there are barriers so that um creates the resistance to the receptivity yeah which then doesn't allow the healing to penetrate far enough Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And um, I've actually seen this happen um, during hypnosis. Um, when I was at when I was at hypnotherapy school, and some of us were very, you know, vulnerable, we were quite receptive to be, you know, to go quite deep in hypnosis, whereas others, they just weren't nothing was happening to them. You know, so absolutely, I, I totally understand that. Yeah, so you have to be ready and you have to be willing and wanting to as well. You, know? you have to be brave. You know, I really think that. I, I remember when I was teaching retreats, like before the pandemic hit, mm. and we were doing very intense, deep work physically. Yeah. And one of the things I always used to say to my, to my groups and students was, you know, it's much easier to go through med school than it is to actually face yourself. Really? Wow. Yes. Because wow. it takes a lot of courage to face okay. yourself and what you've been through and to be able to unravel that right. and literally decode it. Interesting. And oh then God. let it go. That's so true because there's been a lot of talk about people who are still asleep and those who have awakened, right? And I guess that differentiates us all. Mm. I think it. I think it does. I think what differentiates us is how open we are to. It's really actually how open we are because the more open we are, mm. the more also it means we allow new ideas, new ways of being. And we also allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. And that's a tough one right now. Yeah, that is, yeah. There's a lot of fear, isn't there? A lot of fear and a lot of people who probably closed up because, you know, of just everything that they keep listening to and seeing on the news. It's very negative. 
I agree with you. So understandably, there's a lot of fear, but there's also a lot of things that people, simple things that people can do about that. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. are, there are many, many more people that I know that just refuse to listen to the news. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I think people do have to stop listening to the news. It's just not good for the mental health. But, um, so what, what can people do? Just switch off the news, right? <laughs> I think people have to be selective. Because I think that we're in a we're in a position right now, um, globally, where there's so much change going on yeah. that we need to keep ourselves stable as stable as possible. Okay. And one of the ways of doing that, which I think people are doing intuitively, actually, is that they're saying, "Well, you know what? I know what I need to do yeah. on a daily basis." That's good. Yeah. So let me focus on that. Let me focus on being a good neighbor. Yeah. Let me focus on my local community. Yeah. Because, you know, travel has changed and, you know, um, just doing things have changed. Of course, there's a lot more also uh, knowledge, information available online, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But physically, I think people people have realized that, they can be very happy doing little, what seem to be little things yeah. in their lives and feeling quite comfortable and stable. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. It's just having the joy in, in the little things, like just reading a book. Exactly. Yeah. Or just, you know, I mean, I, I know that, you know, during the whole pandemic thing, yeah. one of my greatest joys, actually, was just to be able to, in the evening, just sit there and just put on Netflix and oh, not worry yeah. about, you know, anything. Know. Yeah, it's so, true. <laughs> it's so true. I've never felt so much joy in watching Netflix as I had throughout the lockdown. It's yeah. so strange. And I think it's because we're doing things a lot more consciously because we're not having to run around. <laughs> You know, we can just stay put, can't we? Yeah. And we also don't have to make excuses for relaxing. Yeah. <gasps> yes, so true. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one brilliant. of the... That is, it's one of the biggest things that came up, you know, for many of, of my clients and students, etc. was that we just don't feel guilty about yeah. now not, not going crazy, just doing things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. <laughs> so and it'll be interesting to kind of um you know just ha have a, a reflection moment and just think to yourselves listeners what brings you joy even if it's just sitting there with your little child and playing with them you know your pet pet dog pet cats you know just stroking them that's so joyful <laughs> yeah oh well uh, Anu okay that's something that I really thank you for bringing that up because the direct path or the direct and the simplest antidote mm. to trauma yeah. without having to go through all the processing mm. is joy. It really is. If there's, if there's a real medicine for trauma, I promise you it's joy. Okay. You don't even need to go through the analysis of why did it happen? who's you know process the blame the responsibility the abuse all of that you can literally just bypass all of that stuff and just go straight in to the joy and turn the whole trauma experience 180 degrees okay okay I'm just going to raise something because when I was in my dark phase of um just you know complex trauma and really like you know major de depressive disorder as well I wasn't able to even find joy in in anything you know and uh, for me it revolved having to come out of the normal state by obviously using alcohol and drugs so what would be your answer to that that's again fabulous question because it is hard because literally what trauma does, it puts you in an inert yeah. state, literally, where you're, you're almost like, um, not exactly frozen, but close to it. 
You don't really want to move. You don't want to do anything. You do not have a sense of motivation. It's not even hopelessness or depression. It's actually lack of motivation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that, I will tell you, is because the memory, you've locked into the memory of yeah. the trauma. And it's locked you. So it's literally frozen you. Right. So what a lot of people do, like you said, is they take alcohol or drugs or something just yeah. to try to temporarily get out of it. Yeah. But the thing is, the lock is still there. It is, yeah. So therefore, I that's where working with somebody who really knows what they're doing, yeah. that is literally, I mean, that's like the greatest gift and blessing that the universe or God could give to you. Okay. Because literally that person will help you mm. and facilitate unlocking that lock. Yeah. So that it's like, it's like imagine your spirit, mm. your, your little part of you mm. is locked in that space, in that memory. And literally, you need somebody who knows how to open up that lock. Yeah. And once they've opened it, that spirit of you that's locked in yeah. can be released. Wow. I love the way you describe that. I can really. It's magic. That. It is. It's it magic. Is. It is. And even just meditating on that. Oh, my good. I actually believe that that could work wonders for a lot of people. Just visualizing it. Mm. You could visualize it, but I honestly, I think that, okay, there's a key, a specific key for everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, there are some, I've seen it. I've literally seen this directly. There are certain mantras that work for certain people. Yeah. There are certain, um, even, you know, um, herbs that work for certain people. I know for a fact that these recreational herbs like ayahuasca, oh. like psilocybin, um, you know, these things are known now scientifically to unlock gates that may be very stuck. Oh yeah. And of oh. course, if you know some, you know, you know, practicing, like I really truly do this work all the time okay. with my mm -hmm. clients mm -hmm. because part of the health holistic wholeness and healing healing comes from wholeness mm. so literally when you're unlocking something that's trapped yeah. you are allowing that person to reconnect and integrate with that part of themselves and mm. become more whole okay yeah so when you do that it's and, and you get somebody who knows how to do that it can happen so quickly wow. so quickly okay because you know the universe um it's designed for us to work together it's not designed yeah. for us to be separate individuals really it, and that's yeah that's a really interesting concept you mentioned as well because as soon as we kind of you know turn 18 and then graduate from university um it's like just having your own place moving away from your parents is the gold, you know, that, that you've been waiting for. It's like, yes, finally independence. I can, I can get my own place. But then that's not really going to bring anyone joy living on your own. How is that? How is that joyful? This is what I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, but I know they don't. They don't live on their own. They live with their friends mostly. They want to, <laughs> yeah. they want to connect with their peer group and their own kind of generation. It's yeah. not, I, I don't know anybody, honestly, that really wants to be on their own. Right. They, may, they may connect virtually. I know lots mm. of people like that, but there's nobody that really wants to be alone. They, they want to either connect online or they definitely want to live with, with other people, with their yeah. friends. Yeah. Because, you know, they just, they want to be with people who think like them, mm. who are of their time yeah. and their habits. This is the other part of it, who yeah. eat similar food to what they eat, who, you know, dress in a similar way to how they dress wow. and who do similar things. I mean, this is typical teenager, you know, young person yeah. behavior. They, yeah. they all want to be part of their tribe. You know, they want to be part of their tribe. Yeah. So obviously when, when you come to, you know, a couple of decades later and these people are still living on their own, 
that's when there's a few issues with you know loneliness depression because there's been a lot of scientific studies that are taking place with the fact that isolation is the number one cause of depression absolutely we've got a ministry in the uk for loneliness oh wow okay yeah yeah oh whereabouts is that that's that's actually part of the health department now. It's a, there's a literally there's a department for loneliness because, like you said, it's it's a major concern. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because the UK also has a has a we have a, a pretty big aging population, and that leads to loneliness anyway, and all the sort of biochemical, you know, um, imbalances and dysfunctions that relate to that process. So yes, we do, um, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, but I don't, see, that's where I have great faith mm. in life okay. because you'll see, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, these, not all of them, but some of these young people, they run out of money and they come rushing back home. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <laughs> Generally in the thirties, right? <laughs> yeah, all forties. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know and or they can't get a job or whatever and they come right back to the nest <laughs> yeah exactly I know or, so, or or they realize that that you know that they're sick of the nine to five and they want to go and do their own thing so yep. yeah so life life you know it takes over yeah it you know don't I, I think that people really think that they make their own decisions and choices. Mm. And I think that's the greatest misconception that we have mm. okay. as, as a human species, because I don't think we do. Life mm. is, is the thing that really pushes us and forces us okay. to make choices and do things that we may not necessarily do. I've, mm. you know, I've worked with so many people who go into a crisis before they have a spiritual epiphany oh okay you know they lose their jobs they lose their money they lose their house they get yeah. divorced mm. you know they go into this huge kind of black hole right. and then suddenly they experience a miracle yeah 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 that there's a few famous um authors who have written about this you know the, the big exactly. awakening and yeah absolutely <coughs> yeah yeah, so sometimes you have to go through that in order to awaken. I think I think we have to go through many things because mm. we are so individualistic. Yeah. And we believe that we we decide things and we're in control. Yeah. That the that life then just hits us and says, "Hey, wake up." <coughs> you know, like <coughs> what we're experiencing with the planet. Oh, goodness, exactly. And we're going to do a session on this, aren't we? Uh, planetary uh, <coughs> healing, which I'm really looking forward yes. to. And uh, you can give us more of an insight of your foundation as well, which I'm really excited to hear about. So, that would be a pleasure because I'm actually going to really talk, talk about, discuss planetary trauma and how yeah. that affects us oh, as well. Yeah, yeah. Because we are, you know, we're completely connected with this planet. It's our home. It is. Yeah, absolutely. And we were all born with a purpose. Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. So whatever affects this beautiful planet is going to affect us directly. We just don't realize it until something happens for it to slap us in the face. And then we realize, I mean, the floods that we experienced in the UK, yeah. you know, it's like, well, what other proof do you need of climate change and weather changes and all of that? Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I totally am in agreement with that. And uh, we'll also look at um, like the layers of trauma and looking at, you know, family trauma versus community trauma. I'm really excited to kind of go more into that. And uh, cultural trauma, like you said, I think that's going to be really important to discuss as well. So that, that Anu, just as a, a quick remark, it really ties in with diversity and inclusivity. OK, right. so this is very important you know, um, for, for everyone right now, yeah. this uh, cultural 
trauma and community trauma because of historical and generational inheritances okay. from from different races and cultures and history yeah you know so okay oh lovely so you you've got a healing program currently haven't you um actually it's uh, yes it's a healing program but it's also quite um it's quite uh scientifically oriented so mm-hmm. it definitely uh, the, the general term is healing but um we're using very kind of the principles of science and mm-hmm. spirituality in a very harmonious and balanced way okay. um so that everything is covered in a very regulated um, and very beautiful, uh, graceful manner. That's really the processes that I use. My, my work is very graceful and also very, very fast. And it's, it's, it's very nice. Most of the, the feedback and the testimonials have been wonderful throughout with, with, the processes that I use so I would definitely please you know encourage your your audience who would like help and support with some of their emotional or mental or spiritual and definitely physical trauma issues to look at my website um, and reach out yeah, and absolutely. you know I, I'd be very very happy to serve in this way because that's one of the things I've come here to do yeah I know and and I can totally see that and it's the amount of um studying that you've done you know in relation to this uh, highly important um topic which is trauma and healing like for me it's highly important because I feel especially now post-covid it's going to be needed more than ever it is it is Mm. just because of a lot of the, the the sort of mental um, mental health issues yeah. that have you know become very apparent I think they were there but they weren't so obvious now yeah, you know true. they're very obvious and people are really struggling I know and that's you know I really I really encourage people to reach out mm-hmm. we do group work we do individual work um, all sorts of things and they just need to reach out and see how what I, I'll do the best that I can to see how best yeah. they can be served through the work. So I think you've got you you you'll share my website, yeah, which is genuine genuinehumanbeing.com. Okay, perfect. And you got some social media channels as well, which I can share. Yes, yeah, yes. I've, I've got LinkedIn. I've got Instagram. Excellent. And I've got Facebook, of course. Yes, perfect. And I'll be adding those links. So that's all we have time for today, everybody. And Dr. Sangeeta, you've been an absolute honor. Honestly, your knowledge and just, you know, the way that you describe things is so relational. And I just feel that we need more of it in our life because I've listened to a lot of gurus and sometimes I can get quite technical. And I feel that sometimes for the, you know, the everyday person, it could be a bit too much. Whereas I think the way that you've just described everything today, it's amazing. So thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. And again, thank you, Anu, and really thank thank you to your audience because they've taken their time out to listen so it's a pleasure and I will see you soon yes so um a listener so as I said you know this is part one of of a series of quite a few that we're going to be doing together because Dr Sangeeta has a lot of wisdom and light to share with us all and you know I do hope that you enjoyed this episode and please do get in touch with Dr Sangeeta on her website or social media channels follow her because you know her posts you do post a lot don't you I think I do post um, there's something I'd like to mention we're doing a series a free series of meditations um, which are really coming from the Unified Human Foundation the charity and we want to connect people up the 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 intention behind the meditation series is to get people connected with a sense of belonging a belonging to Mm -hmm. themselves but 
more so to the planet. Okay. So when they connect with her, yeah. they feel much more secure about yeah. being alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I I'm would thinking. really, really, you know, encourage people. And the first meditation we're going to have is on, on December the 8th. Okay. Oh, lovely. Five so, days time. Yeah. Exactly. So if you if you share that, that's on the Unified Human Foundation yep. um, website. You've got the link actually because I think you've seen it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, definitely. I will be sharing this. Um, and I think it's an amazing offering that you're doing. Again, it's service. You're serving the yep. world. Yeah. Yeah. What great definitely. gift is there than, than to serve? Well, it's an honor. Yeah. it's 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 a blessing it's it's a gift it's grace so definitely please you know <laughs> join in everyone together we <sighs> thrive <sighs> we do and yeah. blossom we really flourish together we do yeah you do and this is why you know I've started this podcast to create my own little community of survivors to give them hope and inspiration which I hope you have got from my episode so far and today's episode as well so um as i said you know that's all we have time for today but please do um get in touch with dr sangeeta and join her meditation and i will be back with the next episode soon in the meantime stay blessed stay loved and keep healing thanks for tuning in to today's episode of victim to victor subscribe so you don't miss out on new episodes and be sure to follow the podcast on socials to keep updated on what's next and share victim to victor with family and friends to help grow the community and spread the positive healing energy You may also wish to join me on the path to self-discovery and sign up to my 12-week self-empowerment plan, which will be linked below.